Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training, and today I'm going to do a video about a thing called Bat Server. Bat Server is a new edition for EDIUS 11, which has been written by the people at EDIUS.net, and it lets you add ways to get EDIUS to talk to other programs using a batch file. It's only possible with EDIUS 11 because of the new Chorus Hub. Now, the Chorus Hub is included in every EDIUS 11. It's not something that you have to buy extra. There is another Chorus thing which you have to pay more money for, but the actual Chorus Hub that this use is included in all EDIUS 11s. Now, what this thing does is let you write some batch files, and then that adds something into the EDIUS menus. So essentially, you can just click on a clip, choose this option, and it does something EDIUS doesn't already do. Make more sense as I go through it. You don't need to know about writing batch files because it comes with a whole bunch included, which I'm going to show you. But if you do write batch files, then you can make your own up. So anyway, first of all, you have to install it. Now, as I film this, which is 25th of October, it's still in beta. It was shown off at IBC, but it's currently in a beta version, which you can download from edius.net. So you need to go to edius.net bat server, and here you can see you have a video about using it. Now, this video is a little bit out of date. They are going to update it. They just haven't as I'm filming this. And what you do is you come down to this link here and you just click on it and it will download the latest installer. What it does is it updates the EDIUS setup manager to include the bat server. So I'll just go through doing that. Fairly simple. So now that that's finished downloading, all I'm going to do is just bring it up, run it. Do this with EDIUS turned off because it's going to put some stuff into EDIUS and just go ahead and install it. So essentially I just click yes, 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 and in it goes. As you can see, it says it's currently beta. It will update itself when the thing is no longer beta, but it's good enough to show you right now and you could start using it right now. At the end of it, I'm going to launch the EDIUS setup manager. It takes a little bit of time to pop up and then it does its usual thing. Now this looks exactly the same as the EDIUS setup manager that you've previously had. It just goes through and checks for updates on everything, including EDIUS. So you just let it do this. Again, it takes a little bit of time and then you get to the usual thing. Again, this is just the EDIUS setup manager where it says, is there anything that needs to be updated? I've literally just installed this machine so it's all completely up to date. Bosh, EDIUS setup manager is finished. But now that it's been done, I can come down to the setup manager here, right click on it, and there's a new thing called the bat server panel. And if you pop up that, it comes up with the bat server and it says, right, bat server is not installed. So all you've done so far is just update the setup manager. It doesn't put bat server on as a default. So you do this, click here to install bat server, and then again, you just let it get on with it. And it gets to this point, you just tick, I accept the license agreement and install. And again, you just wait for it to go ahead and install all of this stuff. Once it's done, you get a new bat server icon on the desktop. And it's finished. Now I've come into Odis and you can't see anything immediate about it that's different because you access all of this by a right click. So if I come up to the bin and right click, you might notice that down here I've got a thing that says speech to text, which wasn't there before, plus this add function. If I go to a clip on the timeline and right click, you can see I've also got a create there. So it's already put a couple of things in that I didn't have there in the first place. There's also this option for Explorer, which basically means you just click on that and it opens up Windows Explorer, showing you wherever that clip on the timeline is. Now, as is quite typical sometimes with EDIUS, when you choose Explorer, the Explorer pops up, but it pops up behind EDIUS. It doesn't just happen with EDIUS, that happens with other programs as well. That's just Windows being silly. But this is a new thing. Just added by that, it'll take you from the clip on the timeline to the clip in Windows Explorer. But you might want to add in some more stuff here. How do you do that? Well, there's two ways of doing it. Obviously, the first thing is you can right click and say add function, and then it will bring up for you the bat server panel, which is this which shows you a list of the functions that are already in here and ways of creating more. You can also get to that by going down to the EDIUS Setup Manager next to your clock in the tray down here, right clicking on that and saying Bat Server Panel. But either of them will get you to this. Now, as you can see, it's already got a few things in there, but I can add some more. You add in more by coming up to this thing at the top and saying Create New EDIUS Entry. 
and then you've got a list of different things that you can add in. The first one is creating something from scratch. So this is where if you know how to write a batch file, you would click on that and then put in a batch file which does something. Now the other ones here are already pre-programmed to do stuff and you can just change a couple of options. A couple of things I'll show you in this video. I'll use the first one to get all my still images to open up with Affinity Photo. I'm going to use the speech to text to make some subtitles for a bit of video. I'm going to use the deinterlacing here to deinterlace some stuff, but there's obviously a lot more things in here. I'm first of all going to go to this one, speech to text. Now there is already a speech to text in there. And what I'm going to set up is frankly exactly the same thing, but I'm going to set it up from scratch just to give you an idea of how to do this. So click on here, go speech to text, and then first off, choose the language. And my language is English, so I'm going to choose that. Secondly, do you want to translate the results to English? Uh, obviously not, because I am in English. Of course, this is helpful for you if your original language isn't English. I'd love to have a different way of, say, maybe translating my subtitles into German or French or Spanish. I must work out how to do that. But out of the box, it's set to translate stuff into English. So I'm going to say, no, I don't want to translate it because it already is by clicking OK. Where do you want it to pop up? Do you want it to pop up in the bin or when I right click on a clip on the timeline? I'm going to set this up by right clicking on a clip on the timeline. So I'm going to choose that, say OK, and then just give it a name. English is fine to me. Could have called it anything I feel like. Clock. It's now created a new beats to text to go on the timeline. Come back into Edius, and I've got a clip here on the timeline. This is my last video that I did on just the latest updates inside of Edius. Popped it on the timeline, it's about 17 minutes long. I want to take that and make some subtitles. I'm going to right click on the clip and say speech to text, English. And then this little window pops up and it starts doing it. This window, you can pick it up and move it around, but it gets in the way. But the thing is, this is actually happening in the background. So I could carry on working just doing other stuff whilst it does it. What it does is it takes the video that I've got on the timeline there, it converts the sound to a WAV file, and then it puts it through this thing called the Whisper Engine, which is a very nice speech to text thing, which is actually free to use. You can use it as part of a program called Subtitle Edit, but it takes it from Edius, whacks it through this engine. This engine is working on an NVIDIA graphics card. So if you haven't got an NVIDIA graphics card, it either won't work or it'll work very slowly. My NVIDIA card in this is a nice NVIDIA 4060, so it's actually pretty fast, but on older cards it will take longer. But you'll see how long this takes, because you see it's already transcoding it. You can see it popping up with the subtitles here as it goes through. It's already got to 15 minutes, and I haven't actually chopped anything out of this video whilst it's been doing that. You get a little beep, that's it, it's finished. So it did that in a couple of minutes. What it's done then is to transcode it and then make up a new subtitle file and put it into the bin. All I gotta do is drag that, pop it on top of my video, and there we are, I've got some subtitles to go with this video. Now these subtitles are just like any subtitles you might create with Acoustic or anything. If you pop them on the timeline, double click on it, it'll open up in Viz Title Express and you can go through and edit it and change the look of it and all that sort of thing. I have done some videos about some basic subtitle editing, which you can see on my channel. So see a little bit more on editing the stuff by looking at those videos. But essentially it's made a subtitle file. I could just use it or I could fiddle with it. How accurate is it? Of course, that's the most important question. So I'm going to pop back to the start of the timeline and start playing. Hello, David Clark here from DBC. Well, OK, pretty good, apart from the fact it hasn't spelt Clark with an E, but I suppose I can let it off. Training and just doing a short video about the latest couple of updates on Edius. Here's an interesting one. It's actually spelt Edius correctly. It's actually being pretty good at spelling out words which aren't that immediately obvious. For example, in my little Doctor Who-y thing, it has the word Dalek and it gets that correct. Most of the characters it got correct. It's not perfect, but actually it's pretty good and it's pretty accurate. So they've both been small. It's still 11.11, .11, so no major new features. Yeah, but I think it's actually very, very good. I mean, I've used the one in Acoustica, which was okay, but needed a bit of editing. 
Because I've got the studio version of Resolve, I have used their one, and that really was my go-to until I could do this, because actually that worked also pretty quickly and was pretty accurate. I think this is better than the Resolve one. I think it's more accurate. Still not 100% perfect. Yeah, it's spelt quick sync correctly, although there should really be a space between the quick and the sync, but I can suppose I can let that off. Yeah, it's got mink wrong. That is quite a sensible spelling for mink, but obviously that's not correct. But yeah, look at that. It's all pretty accurate. Very little editing to be done. In fact, a lot of the time, especially as I do very long videos where I talk an awful lot, I would just take these subtitles, put them up onto my YouTube channel, and just use them with very minimal editing. Because frankly, editing subtitles is really, really boring. That, I think, is a great little feature to have and extremely useful. Now, when I set that up, I told it to go onto the timeline. I can instead tell it to go into the bin. I've already told it to go onto the timeline, and you might think, well, you've just got to make another one up. Actually, all I've got to do is come to this thing, right click on it, and say change place. Now, if I do that, it gives me an option of where else it can go. The only other place is the bin. That is now going into the bin. Now, I already did have an English one pre-made in there, but I've got another one now. And now I can go into the bin and right click on a clip and say speech to text English. These ones down here with the uh, ones that were already there. This is the one that I've just made. Of course, there's no point in me adding it into the bin, but I just wanted to show you that you can very, very easily just change where it pops up bin or timeline. Also, you might notice I'm not restarting ideas, anything like that, literally. Pop this thing up, change stuff, it automatically changes it inside of Edius. But really, that's kind of the, the basics of how this works. You just add some stuff in, they pop up as a right click, you right click, and then it just goes ahead and does it. What it's doing is running this, which is the batch file. Now, you might look at that and glaze over because you've never seen a batch file. But essentially, using the Chorus Hub, it takes the stuff off the timeline, runs it through that, and then creates a new file, and then pops it into the bin. And I understand some of this, and other bits I don't understand. This is the sort of thing where if you understand what this actually does, you might be able to change some of this to something that suits your preferences. But yeah, that is the basics of setting up the batch server. Now, in the second video I'm going to do on batch server, I will just show you a few of the other options, set up things like sending files off to a specific program and a bit of deinterlacing. So I'll pop that video up in the next couple of days. Obviously, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you get a notification of when that pops up. In the meantime, if you want more information, visit the website www.dbctraining.co.uk and I'll see you next time.